Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel of the Whiteboard Doctor. Today we're going to be talking about class 2 antiarrhythmics. So for those of you who've been following along, we've been doing a series on the classes of antiarrhythmic drugs. We have an introductory video, um, then we covered class 1. We're going to talk about class 2 in this video, then we'll do 3 and 4 in upcoming videos. We will link all of these in the video description. So if you want to go through all of them, which may make the most sense if you follow it conceptually, um, please check those videos out. Um, otherwise, in this video, we're going to focus on class 2 antiarrhythmics. Um, also known as beta blockers. So this class of drugs is a little, uh, I don't want to say less confusing than the other classes, but it doesn't go into the cardiac action potential as we've been talking about with the other antiarrhythmics. This class of drugs actually binds to beta, are there, adrenal receptors, and as such, they block norepinephrine and epinephrine, which are, you know, sympathetic surge types of molecules. By doing so, they affect nodal conduction. So they, you know, are less important for kind of uh, myocytes and things, but they affect nodal conduction, right? SA node, AV node, and those other pacemaking cells, uh, SA node, AV node, and other pacemaking cells. How does this work? Well, if we draw out a little heart here, I didn't plan to do this, so I apologize for my, you know, um, spur of the moment drawing, but we have, right, nodal tissue. We have an SA node up here, we have the AV node here, and the action potentials depolarize the atria, they then go from the SA node throughout the atria, and then they all converge into the AV node, where they go through, you know, the bundle of his, and then into the Purkinje fibers, into the right and left bundles, and then they depolarize the ventricles through that. Well, on these nodes, we have beta-1 receptors and beta-2 receptors, all right? Beta-1 receptors activation increases contractility, also known as, uh, sorry, contractility, also known as inotropy, and also increases heart rate, also known as chronotropy. Beta-2 receptors have more action on vascular smooth muscle. And activation of them, smooth muscle will abbreviate SMM, activation of them, so increasing them, causes vasodilation of smooth muscles. This is where we get into non-selective and selective beta blockers. Excuse me. So, beta blockers affect both beta-1 and beta-2 receptors, but different beta blockers affect them differently, right? There are selective beta blockers. Let me scroll down a little bit. And these selective beta blockers, most of them, I remember when I was in med school, I'm not sure if they're still using this, they use the pneumonic, pneumonic, uh, pneumonic beam because you're beaming the heart with these selective uh, beta blockers. Selective means that they are much more selective for beta-1 receptors on the heart, right, which are responsible for contractility and chronotropy, or heart rate, and, uh, well, inotropy and chronotropy are heart rate and contractility. And B stands for bisoprolol, bisoprolol, esmolol, atenolol, acebutolol, say, butylol, and metoprolol. Um, there is also one that I personally have never used called bituxolol that is selective as well. When we say selective, what we mean is that they, you know, have very little beta-2 action and thus have very little um, action against 
uh, let me rephrase that, very little beta 2 action. And as such, they don't tend to affect blood vessels or vasodilation, which is a beta 2 property. This is in contrast to non-selective, which are going to have, as we talked about, both beta 1 plus beta 2 activity. And non-selective are, you know, the ones that aren't selective. There's going to be things like car vetalol, labetalol, um, I think it's alol, um, in addition to that, natalol, propranolol. I'll just list out a few more, sodalol, timolol. So these are non-selective. And what that means is that they can also lead to mild vasodilation. Now, don't be mistaken, the selective beta blockers can still affect blood pressure, right? Because it's decreasing contractility and heart rate, which can affect the blood pressure, especially contractility. But they don't have a direct effect on the beta-2 receptors in the vascular smooth muscle like the non-selective beta blockers do. All right, when we talk about what they're used for, we um, primarily think about them for a few things. One, after acute coronary syndrome or myocardial infarction, they are started because they decrease myocardial oxygen demand, right, by decreasing heart rate and contractility. We also use them for tachydysrhythmias, right, they're an antiarrhythmic Dysrhythm. This might not be the best smelling. Dysrhythmias, because um, they decrease automaticity by decreasing that release of epinephrine and norepinephrine and stimulating that beta or inhibiting that beta one receptor on the nodal tissues. All right, they're used in heart failure as well because they prevent myocardial remodeling. And then, although they're not your first, you know, or second, or really third line drug, sometimes they're started for hypertension, you know, specifically the non-selective, since they also can affect peripheral um, blood vessels. All right, so that was kind of the quick and dirty on class two antiarrhythmics, also known as beta blockers. Hope that was helpful. Let us know what questions, thoughts, comments you have down below. Um, feel free to hit subscribe, follow along, check out our other antiarrhythmic videos. We appreciate you and stay well.